So in the video today, I want to just show you a quick workflow and techniques that I'm going to apply to these images here, which originally look like that. But I want to show you how I got it to look like that. One of the most frustrating things that can happen as photographers is experiencing a beautiful moment out in nature and getting home and just looking at your raw files and feeling like you just absolutely either didn't do it justice or the raw files are just letting you down. It's a very common scenario that you face as a landscape photographer. Is it's multiple small adjustments, which then all add up to just give one large result. Now I'm gonna reset these now and show you how the raws looked. And you can imagine that it didn't look like this, did it, to the eye. Now your goal might be to bring back the edits to how the eye saw it, or you might just want to create your own thing altogether. There's no right or wrong, um, and I wouldn't get too caught up on that either. You just go with whatever you, you feel like running with. So this scene here, the slow shutter, this is definitely as the light's getting much lower as well. Look at this one in the raw. Very grey and flat, not much light in it. There's about a million uh, dust spots on there as well, <laughs> which you'll have to sort out. Um, not on this video though, I'll spare you that. So let's do a bit of a workflow now on both images. We'll do one at a time and then you'll just see how we go from flat to finish, you know, essentially how to make the photos pop. I don't really like that saying. I don't know why I don't like it, but um, anyway, you get the idea. Let's make them pop. Let's bring them back to life. First thing I'm going to do, looking at this one, now we're in camera raw. If you use Lightroom, workflow is exactly the same. The layout's incredibly similar as well. First thing, I'm going to go a little bit brighter, just looking at the histogram, looking at the image, it does look a bit dull, and the histogram's telling me that we've got a huge amount of the image just as a darker mid-tone, not too many brights, so I'm going to brighten that up about there. Now I'm looking at the right-hand side of the histogram, it's, it's starting to lose detail, that's going to be some of those highlights up in there, so now I'll just pull back the highlights a little bit. Now, the first thing when it comes to color, if you just want to get some good initial color in your raw files, I really suggest jumping up to the color profile and throwing it on the Adobe Landscape or a Vivid, but typically I'd use a Landscape. Now watch this straight away, okay? Got quite a change, I'll turn that off again and throw that on. Do that at the start of your workflow. By doing that at the start, then you're going to work forward from there. If you do your colors, vibrant, saturation, um, grading, and then you throw the profile on, it'll probably overdo things. So just do it at the start, and then you can move forward from that point. I find it really effective to use. Moving down now through the, the sliders that we have, the vibrance and saturation is obviously one that you want to it's not every shot, but most images you'll want to adjust. The vibrance is mid-tone, so it's a lot more subtle. Saturation is highlights and shadows, so you'll probably find a lot of the time you'll have to go easy on the saturation compared to the vibrance. Looking at the water here, it does have like quite a brown, you know, goldeny brown tone in there, a little bit of green. I just don't like that, and it didn't even really look like that. And even if it did, I don't really care. The fact is, I just that's not the color palette that I want to run with. I really like a cooler palette here. So I'm going to start to cool down the temperature, and I'm just being mindful of the fact that I don't want my whites to get too blue. Blue in the shadow is quite natural, but I want to make sure that we're not going blue all the way through. That way, that way you've overdone it by that point if that's how it's looking. And that's where the grading is going to come into play. So I might leave that about there. Now looking at all our little highlights, I really love those highlights, that shimmer. Let's warm those up and that's where the grading is really going to come into play. So open up the color grading and the way this works, you've probably seen this in some of my other videos. I want to hit the highlights and what I want to do to the highlights is warm them. So I go to the highlight wheel, I move the outer circle to the color that I want to apply. So I'm going to pick like a, a yellowy orange. And now to apply it, I need to select this inner circle and drag that outwards, and that applies the saturation. I'm going to hold shift when I do that, and that creates that black line there. And that means I can't slip off that color. If I don't hold shift, see it starts spinning around all over the place. So I'm going to hold shift, click and drag. And then you can see there in the image, now I might just experiment going more into the orange. And I'll dial that back and forward, see the difference in the file. I'm not going to apply too much. I'm now actually going to go up to the midtones and let's add the blue in here. This would be nice for our water. See what's happening there? 
And again, just making sure that we're not overdoing it and having too much blue through the frame. I really want tonal separation in colors as well as the actual tonalities. So color separation, and what I mean by that is areas of one color and another. And that way we're gonna create a sense of depth instead of the whole thing just having one blue tone, one warm tone, whatever. Sometimes I'd cool the shadows down quite commonly. I won't do that in this image because I feel like they're already cool enough. Now, the next thing to really just bring this one to life is I'm gonna jump into the curves here. This is where we've got our histogram and the various tones. Highlights and shadows representing the outer edges of the histogram, of course. Lights and darks representing the midtones, and that's what we predominantly have in this file, lights and darks. So this is gonna be a midtone contrast adjustment. Contrast is when brights get brighter, darks get darker. So I'm gonna get the midtone here, the lights, and drag that to the right. And instantly that's just giving us a nice boost of luminosity. Then to create the contrast side of things, I could bring down the darks just a touch. Let's say it there. Now look, it's all subjective. It's personal preference. There's no real right or wrong. And what I always say is let it marinate. Come back later in an hour, tomorrow, whatever. Reassess and you know, you'll probably make a few more final adjustments. And I'd like to do that at least three times minimum um, across a few weeks. There's no rush really, generally. Um, so the longer you can leave it, the better. Let's just do a before and after. Reset to default. So that's where we were. And then we're gonna apply that again. That's where we're at. Let's move on to the next image now and do a bit of a workflow on this one. So it's quite different. Reset to, oh, that is the default, sorry, yep. So what did we do? Let's go apply the previous settings. All right, and it's funny now that I look at that, it actually looks a bit overcooked and this is the beauty of the marination going back and forward. So let's just start again. Let's do a new one, reset to default. Same thing with the exposure. I feel like it's a little bit dull. So I'm gonna bring up the exposure about there. I'll recover those highlights partially. Straight up to our profile. Okay. And what do we wanna run with here? Do we wanna utilize those cooler shadows and those beautiful warm highlights? So nice, cool, warm contrast. Do we wanna go warmer in general, which is kind of the direction that I initially had it. You know, I don't know, today, the mood I'm in, I don't know, I'm just liking the blue. So this is what I've said a few times already, just go with whatever you feel like going with in your photographs. Um, there's no rules in photography. I believe in integrity and photographing real locations that I can take people and they exist on earth. But you know, when it comes to your processing, just have fun with it guys, don't, don't get too caught up in it. Um, all right, the tint, the, the greens and magenta, Let's just experiment with that. I wouldn't mind just adding a touch more magenta about there. Straight away now, I want to run down to our vibrance and saturation. Let's go about 25 on that. Probably gonna end up about 10 or so on the saturation. What I want to do is create an, a real nice reference for that light coming into the top of the frame. We, we have it already, you can see it running down there. I'll show you how we can emphasize that. We'll use the adjustment brush. So I push K on the keyboard or you go in your masking panel and just select the brush. And what I'll do is I'll brighten it up and I will rehaze, which is adjusting con mid-tone contrast to some degree, but I'm reducing it. And that'll just give us, I'm gonna zoom out using the edge of the brush now. Just emphasizing that light coming into the top of the frame. So I'll, I'll turn that rehaze on and off. You can see what that, that's doing there. The main reason why that is effective, it's because in nature, anything further away has a lighter level of black tone. Anything close has a deeper level. So you can see in there, it's relatively dark in the blacks. And then further away, it gets quite light. Just walk outside and you'll be able to observe this. So by doing that rehazing, it's very similar to just say raising the blacks up or the shadows. It's just emphasizing distance, just like a painter would. And then of course, on that mask, that brush, we added exposure, which is just replicating some nice light. Now I might go, I might dial that back a little bit because I don't want to lose the highlights there. The other thing we could do is just warm that up a touch too, like that. I'm gonna go back to the main 
uh, adjustments and now I'm going to go back to another brush actually. So I push K. This time I want to darken the lower portion mainly, I'm going to use contrast. You will see what this will do here. It's just really creating that depth in that lower part of the frame and by doing that it actually helps the background look even further away now. So something probably around there. I'm going to push K for a new one. So a lot more local adjustments on this frame. I'm going to scroll down, whites. White is light. So anything that has a hint of light on it, the whites will lift it beautifully. So all the top of the wave here. And I'll turn this on and off now and you'll see exactly what I mean. I'll increase it further actually. So it's like dodging, really gentle. Now, color grading. Some grading on this one's gonna be beautiful. Let's go down here, mainly because there is so much warmth in those highlights already. So if we just jump in, and just like we did before in the other file, just warming those up. And then I'll do the opposite with the shadows now. Cool those down. We're going for a nice, cool, warm contrast in this one. The mid-tones, potentially I'll leave them. Let's just cool those a little bit for the rest of the water. Mm. Or we could warm those up. Again, this is where it's all subjective, right? Just you, And every day you might do a completely different edit. Yeah, somewhere around there. All right. This is where, you know, the point I've got to in both of these files, I would just save it as a draft, essentially, come back later. You can even leave the room and walk back in. I feel like this one could actually still be a touch brighter. Let's go about there. This one, yeah, maybe a little bit brighter as well. Just make sure those highlights are nice and safe. Let's reset them now. Let's see where we've come from. Reset to default. Yeah. Okay, and our first one, reset to default. All right. Hopefully that's just given you a few little tips there and food for thought when it comes to processing the colors. Remember, adjust the profile, get that on landscaping. It's gonna give you a head start straight away. Have a play if your temperature and tint, the vibrance and saturation, and then jump into the grading. That approach there is instantly just gonna lift everything and get those rich color tones throughout the frame. Then keep in mind, keep referencing the histogram. It is nice to, you know, contrast is beautiful. So making sure if you watch the histogram now, this has quite a big range of tones in it. If we go back to the original, see how it's more of just a flat mid-tone. So I went in and really made sure that I've got more contrast. Now that's not right, I don't know why it's done that. There it is. <laughs> Uh, same with this one here, if we reset that to the default, not as much light tones is there, you know, it's still predominantly a mid-tone, so making sure that I'm bringing out those tones, you could even actually in the curves on this one, just introduce some more darker tones as well. When those tones get brighter, it also helps with the color. You can see that in the red channel, for example, going up higher and higher, and that's all those warm tones getting more saturated. So I hope that's helped out guys. As always, just leave any questions below. I've enjoyed just showing you a bit of a workflow in these files and images like these are just so fun to work with. You can take them a million different directions. Um, even this one here, I'd potentially do a little bit of global texture on there as well because it's nice and sharp. This one, you could actually do the opposite. You could reduce the clarity and reduce the, the texture and just really emphasize that painterly look um, if you haven't done this type of photography as well, just by the ocean or a lake when it's windy, I encourage you to get out there and have a try, and I'll do that in a video soon, um, just showing you how you can do it, but it, it really opens up for some fun photography, particularly if you don't really have much subject matter aside from water and light. Um, you can have a lot of fun, and I definitely had fun most afternoons going out and doing this type of photography. So thanks again, guys. Uh, Thank you for supporting the channel. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. I don't like saying that, but honestly, it does help the channel. And uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.